Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode from Network From Home. I am your host, Ross Rickey, and today we'll be talking about how to crimp your Ethernet cables. There's a few dis different reasons why you would want to do this. Sometimes you have an RJ45 connector, one of these things. You might have a, a tab break off. Excuse me. I'll show you an example in real time here. What happens if the tab, anyone see that? The tab of your ethernet cable, let's say, snaps off and sometimes it takes a little elbow grease here. All right. Let's say the tab of your ethernet cable snaps off. You might want to put a new RJ45 connector on the end of your cable. You might also want to simply make your own custom ethernet cables or shorten an existing cable that you have. Those are all reasons why you'd want to crimp your ethernet cable. So let's walk through the steps to do that. And before we do that, let's talk about the things that you'll need in order to crimp your Ethernet cable. First and foremost, what you're going to want is a crimping tool. This is the tool that you use to add the RJ45 connector to the end of your cable so that you can plug it into your devices. You'll also want a stripping tool. As you'll see, this is used to Carefully remove the protective sheath off of your Ethernet cables so that way you can get to the wires and that tool ensures that you don't damage the wires when you take off the, the cover for it. We'll also want RJ45 connectors. These things right here. These are what go on to the end of your Ethernet cable and allow them, allow your cable to get connected into your devices that you'd like to connect. Also, this is more of an optional item, but the boots, these are RJ45 boots. What they do is they prevent the tab from the RJ45 connector form from breaking off. And I'm sure we've all dealt with that before. If you have an RJ45 connector and the tab breaks off of it, chances are it's not gonna stay in the device that it's connected to. It'll fall out. You'll have to fidget with it in order to get a good connection. It's just overall kind of a pain. So that's why having these things, these, these boots, it's nice to have. And then lastly, this is another optional item, but I find it's very helpful and I have one in my home network toolbox. This right here is an ethernet cable tester. It will tell you when you plug in your ethernet cable, whether it's functioning properly or not. So of course that's useful as well. All right, so let's get into it. Let's look at the first step. So let's pretend here that I have my ethernet cable with a boot on it. And then say I like trip and fall and oops, I lost the connector of my ethernet cable. So now what do I do? I have to put a new RJ45 connector on there. How do you do that? You do that with a crimping tool and following the steps that I will detail here as I struggle to get the boot off because these can be reused. So I'll reuse this boot when we get into it here. Okay, so as I mentioned, what we need to do is we need to remove the outside protective sheath of this ethernet cable so we can get at the wires that are inside the cable. So what we have to do here on your stripping tool, there's a little tab that you can press down. So you're going to open this up and then slide your Ethernet cable into the opening that it fits into, just about where you want to cut it. There's a little blade here on the bottom that's used to strip the covering off. And I suggest, I recommend to all the users out there that are doing this, you'll want maybe a couple inches. You want enough room to work with because 
you're going to need to straighten all the wires and put them into the RJ45 connector. So let's do that. Let's clamp it in. Once it's clamped in, you just take your finger and you ride the merry-go-round. You just go all the way around. I like to go a couple times and after once around, it'll be really easy to spin the stripping tool around the cable because you have perforated the protective sheet all the way around. Once you've done that a few times, you can click the tab, remove the device, and then your sheet here will slide right off. And what, you, what you'll notice about your Ethernet cables is that every Ethernet cable that you deal with will have eight copper wires inside of it. But what you'll see is that there are actually four pairs of two wires twisted together. That's what we have here. We have orange, green, brown, and blue. And then the white the white wires that are twisted with a particular cover color, excuse me, will be striped with that color. So it might be kind of hard to see, but here with the blue wire, the one the wire that's twisted with it actually has, and you might not be able to see it, see it too well, but it actually has blue, a blue stripe down it. So that way you can tell that it goes with the blue wire. But what we want to do now is let's get all of these wires untwisted. Okay, so one thing that we want to do here now that we have all of these wires separated, let's go ahead and put a boot for our ethernet connector onto the cable. And I make this mistake just about every time. I always forget to put it on. It's better to put it on, well, I would should say that the only way to put it on is you have to put this boot on before the ethernet cable connector, that RJ45 connector, is on the cable. Otherwise you won't be able to get it on after the fact, right? If, if you already have an RJ45 connector on there, this, this boot won't fit over it. So it's best to do it early, just get it on there, slide it down onto the cable and you can put it on the RJ45 connector when you're done. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to put these wires all in a particular order, and these are called pinout configurations. There are two pinout configurations for Ethernet cables. In this day and age, it doesn't really matter which one you use because our devices are smart enough to recognize the configuration that the cable is in, and they will make the cable work and use it accordingly. So what we want to do and I can provide a, a link down below to the different configurations for the T568A and T568B configurations. Or maybe I'll flash it up on the screen for your reference. Just so you can see what the options are. It's very easy to find online. So let's go ahead right now. Let's get these wires in one of these configurations. All right, so let's say we've got all of these in order here. I followed the T568B configuration, which is orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. I have all those in order, and what you'll see when you straighten out your wires is that they're all not going to be the same length. So what we have to do, or what we want to do, is we want to cut all of these wires so that they're the same length. So that way when they go into the RJ45 connector, they'll all go in the same length. And what you want is you want the wires to go to the end of the RJ45 connector. See the, the gold pins? I don't know if you can see the gold pins. There, yeah, the gold pins at the top of the RJ45 connector. The cables need to reach those, so you just want to make sure they're, they're long enough. And you also want to make sure that this RJ45 connector wants to clamp onto the protective sheath of the Ethernet cable. So you want to make sure that both the wires will fit. Whoa, loose ball. 
you want to make sure that the wires will fit to the end of the connector and then the connector, the base of it, can also clamp onto the cable. So I like to just hold it up. It's roughly about this long. So I want to cut the wires at about this point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same little part of my Ethernet crimping tool. I'm going to cut these wires and I'm immediately going to put them into an RJ45 connector so I don't lose the order here. Let's see if I've got a steady enough hand to make that happen. This, is a, this takes a little bit of practice, I'm not going to lie, I've messed it up a few times, but after doing it a few times it's really not so bad. So let's cut, let's cut these wires and see what happens here. And obviously, I, I'm cutting off a, a bunch of wire here, but I'd rather have more wire to play with when I'm getting these wires in the right order and untangling them and everything. So let's put the RJ45 connector on immediately after we have trimmed these wires. You want to, oh, these are hard to hold on to, but you want to ensure that the tab is facing, see that tab on the, connector is facing away from you and you're inserting the wires in the right order. Okay, You want to maintain one of those pinout configurations. So for me it was T568B. I want to give it a quick sanity check while they're in there and make sure everything looks it's pretty good. Looks like I have slight mixed up the blue and the blue stripe, but that's an easy fix. Okay, now we're in order. Let's make sure. Orange stripe, orange. Green stripe, blue. Blue stripe, green. Brown stripe, brown. So let's try that again. Let's keep the tab away from us. Let's put these wires inside cable. I don't know if you can see, but the wires are now reaching the gold pins and then the base of the Ethernet connector is over the sheet. So that way we can, when we crimp this thing, it's going to crimp the RJ45, connect, RJ45 connector onto the Ethernet cable and the wires are going to be all the way to the end. So these gold pins here, try to see if I can, the gold pins that you see there are going to be pushed down into the wires that have been pushed into the channels. There's a channel for each wire, and that's why it needs to be in the right order. So that way, when you have the gold pins, the gold pins get pushed onto the wire so you get a good connection there. Okay, so how do we get this? RJ45 connector onto the wire. We use our handy dandy crimping tool. So what you see here, you might be able to see it, it should say 8P and 6P. 8P is for 8 pin, that's for your ethernet cable connectors. You just want to put your ethernet cable connector into the crimping tool here and you want to do it from this side because if you look at the other side Here's your 8P. See those teeth that are coming down? Those, those teeth push the gold pins from the Ethernet cable connector onto the wires that you inserted. So basically it's taking these gold pins here, pushing them down into the wires beneath them. And you'll only be able to do that if the pins line up with those teeth. And the way to do that is you take the label, the 8P label, you put your RJ45 connector in there and you squeeze the handles. So I squeeze it pretty good. I usually release it and then I'll squeeze it again. Give it a little extra muscle just to make sure it's on there pretty good. And then you can slide it right out. I'll give it a quick test, you know, like tug on a little bit. Seems like it's on there pretty snug. 
we have a pretty good fit. I used some muscle to get it on there, so that's helpful. Now, all that we want to do, we just want to throw our protective boot onto our, and this is why we have to do it beforehand, because we can't get it on after the fact. We want to put this boot over our RJ45 connector. If that looks nice and protected, our tab is protected, it won't get caught on anything and ripped off. It's exactly what we want, folks. Okay. The last thing we do, you know, we have a full cable now. We want to test it, make sure that it's configured correctly. So in order to do that, we use our Ethernet cable testing tool. All you have to do, there's a, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can see that. There's a master side and then there's a remote side. So you just want to plug the RJ45 connectors, one into each side. And then what we're going to do here, I'm going to flip this bad boy on. And what you'll see is it's going to run through each of your connectors, one through eight. It's basically testing all eight Ethernet connector pins. As you can see here, both the master and remote side, they're, line, they're lighting up green and they're in sync. And this is exactly what you want to see. It means that your cable is working properly. Now, if your cable, if maybe one of these lights on either side doesn't light up, it gets skipped, or if the light is not green, it's red, those are some signs that you want to avoid. Or when number one on the remote side lights up, if number seven on the master side lights up, you know that you probably have a wire configuration problem in your ethernet cable. But if you have one through eight, you're lighting them green, everything looks good, you'll be able to go ahead and use that ethernet cable. So now you should have just about everything you need. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Hopefully you found this video useful. We'll see you on the next episode of Network From Home. Thanks for watching.